Today, we'll be taking a look at Dian Hong, aka Yunnan Black Teas. It's the tea that's responsible for sparking my whole obsession with Chinese teas, and it's also the tea that was going to save China. So let me start though with a personal story. On one of my early trips to China, many many moons ago, uh, we were back to visit my wife's, my wife Dawn's family. And towards the end of the trip, right before we had to come back to Australia, we decided at the last minute that we wanted to bring some tea back with us. So Dawn was used to drinking teas, especially Chinese black teas, on a regular basis. And at the time, it was pretty hard for us to find what she was used to drinking back in Australia. So we went and asked Dawn's grandpa where he usually gets his tea from because he drinks a pretty nice black tea every single day without fail. And he points us in the direction of a local tea shop which was located behind the, uh, the nearby food market. And so off we went. And so when we got there, after a few brief introductions, Dawn basically asked the vendor to give me the tea that my grandpa usually gets. And so he brings out a few different packs and you know shows them to us. Now, at this stage in life, I know absolutely nothing about Chinese teas. And Dawn, well, she has some basic knowledge and with her limited knowledge, she asked the vendor, or she said to the vendor, uh, these black teas, they don't seem to have a lot of uh, gold tips in them and don't the better quality black teas have lots of golden tips in them? To which the vendor replied, you seem to know your stuff, so how about this black tea? And he proceeds to open this secret drawer that he has you know, in, in amongst his shelves and he brings out this big bag of gold tip black tea. So without trying it, we just went ahead and bought it. Now did I mention that it was a pretty big bag and it was about half a kilo of tea? We thought, it looks the part, how bad could it really be? And with this amount, it should last us at the very least until we, you know, until the next time we get back to China. And so we get back to Australia and after settling in and getting back to our normal routine, one weekend we decided to brew up some of this gold tip black tea. Nothing fancy, just a small handful of leaves into a teapot, boiling water, steep for about two to three minutes. I took a sip and I was instantly hooked. It was unlike any black tea that I had ever tried before. Like before this, I thought I knew what black tea was. You know, things like English breakfast, Earl Grey, etc., all that kind of stuff. But this, this was something else. It had a very distinct like maltiness, had a wonderful sweetness and this fragrance that I simply couldn't get enough of. And it was much more complex in flavor than any of the typical black teas that I've tried before that. And so from then on, every weekend, I made an effort to brew at least one pot of this wonderful tea. And that tea, it was a Dian Hong black tea. And so the word Dian is an indigenous word for Yunnan. And Hong is red, as in red tea or Hong Cha, which is what they call black tea in China. Due to, its, uh, due to the color of the leaves and the color of the liquor once it's brewed. And so essentially, Dian Hong simply means Yunnan black tea. And flavor wise, what you can typically expect, um, as I was mentioning before, is something that's quite malty, sweet, uh, with you know, some chocolatey notes to it. Plus being a tea from Yunnan, you can also expect a little bit more strength in this tea when compared to some other Chinese black teas. So in a region known mainly for producing poor teas, production of Hong Cha in Yunnan was said to have begun in the 1930s. So during World War II, Japan occupied a large portion of China with the coastal ports and many of the regions that produced black teas for the export market, you know, provinces such as Fujian, Jiangxi and Zhejiang being under Japanese control. And so the revenue that came from exporting black teas to Western markets, that was now cut off 
uh, to the Chinese resistance. So in an attempt to keep this stream of revenue flowing, alternative regions for making black teas were sought out. And one province that they eventually landed on was Yunnan. In particular, the county of Fengqing in Lingtang. Production and processes for making black teas were soon set up and soon enough, Dian Hong black tea was officially born and began to be exported. The revenue gain from exporting Dian Hong would then help fund the Chinese resistance efforts against the Japanese occupiers. And Dian Hong soon became known as the tea that will save the country. Post World War II, Dian Hong continued to be made purely for the export markets and it wasn't sold or made available within China until, uh, until the 1980s where it began to flourish and now it's become one of the more popular and well-known styles of black teas in China. So Dian Hong has been a favourite tea of ours for a fairly long time now and relatively recently we made an interesting discovery when we encountered a Gu Shu or Old Tree Dian Hong Black Tea. Now the literal translation for Gu Shu is Old Tree and it can be loosely defined as tea trees that are at least 200 years old. So when we first tried this Gu Shu Dian Hong, the flavour to us was both familiar yet somewhat unique at the same time. We found it to be a really interesting tea and so we decided to sell it under the name Old Tree Red. So we had encountered this tea through a tea friend in China and initially he was the one that supplied the tea to us. But when we started running low on it, he put us in direct contact with the producer that he, that, that he would source it from in the hopes that we could get more of this tea. So we got in touch with the producer and told him that we absolutely love this tea, this Gushu Dian Hong black tea, and we wanted to get more of it. But before we could commit to an order, we needed to get a sample first, just to make sure that we were talking about the same tea. He sent us a few Dian Hong samples to try, and we tried them all, and well, none of them were the same. And so we went back to the producer and asked him, are you sure that these are Old Tree Dian Hong? Because they taste different from the teas that we previously had. The producer though, he was adamant that one of these teas was in fact the one that we were looking for. And so we brewed the samples again, you know, we tried them again and again and well, I mean, admittedly, we could taste some of the similarities. I mean, there was maltiness, there was sweetness, but there was something missing, you know, something I couldn't quite put my finger on. Whatever it was, it wasn't the same tea. And I wasn't sure if, if, if it was a tea itself or whether I was just brewing it wrong. So we tried to tweak the parameters uh, using boiling water instead of the usual 90 to 95 degrees that we would brew a Dian Hong black tea at normally. I uh, tried to use more leaves, try to use longer steep times, all in an attempt to try and push out more flavor and depth that you know, Old Tree Red seemed to have that these samples didn't. But no matter what I tried, I couldn't get the flavors to match. You know, I couldn't get the flavors that I expected from an Old Tree Red out of these teas. And so in the end, we decided to not go ahead with any of these samples. So as we continued to source and get in different teas for our business, we got in touch with another tea producer from another region in Yunnan. After getting a few of, uh, of, of this particular producer's Pu'er teas, we thought, well, let's see if they actually have a Gu Shu Dian Hong. And they did. So they sent us a sample when we brewed it up to our typical parameters and this was it. This was the old tree red that we were looking for. Admittedly, it wasn't 100% exactly the same as the original old tree red. I mean, it was from a different region after all. But most importantly, it had that missing characteristic that up until now, I couldn't quite put my finger on. And that flavor characteristic is a light, but very distinct herbal note 
that I've now come to associate with Gu Xu Dian Hong black teas. And a typical Dian Hong doesn't have this characteristic. And after now trying two different Gu Xu Dian Hongs from two different regions, I believe it's this unique herbal note that makes a Dian Hong Gu Xu. That's the end of our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. What are your thoughts on Dian Hong black teas? Are you a fan? Have you tried Gu Xu Dian Hongs before? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.